All right, so let's get started with the quest. Gwent Plain in Keeps. For the first one, we are located out in Oxenfurt at the tavern here. You see located on your map. We are going to start by uh, chatting up our innkeep here, and we will be back with a game with him in just a moment. All right, so we're just into our game with uh, the Nilfgaardian Empire, the uh, innkeeper out in Oxenfurt. He's rocking... Obviously, a Nilf Guardian Empire deck. Um, and he has a commander who will invalidate your commander's abilities. So, if you were, if you like to play your Northern Realms deck because it's got that clear weather to it and it always is helpful in this matchup, it's not going to be helpful. Uh, a couple things I'll warn you about about the Nilf Guardian deck, specifically that this guy runs one, he has a lot of high point value cards, two, he has a shit ton of spies. So um, make sure you get your decoy count up for this because if you want to play the uh, card count game with him, which you're going to have to, um, he's going to beat you out if you cannot do something about those spies. Make sure you're running your medic. So if you run out of decoys, you can at least in a following round medic out an, an additional spy just to get your card draw up because he is not playing around. So he's decoying one off. He'll probably decoy the other one off. Know that uh, he does run a medic. Uh, he does have some uh, like one point archer or zero point archer medics, whatever they are, that he uses to um, medic out spy cards in following rounds. So you're just never safe from these damn things. You will see two of these spy cards again, just FYI, I guarantee you. Alright, so technically he has won this round, however, I'll tell you that he likes to rock a Scorch card. Um, and the reason I'll say that now is because a good time to play uh, some of those cards that double up and uh, on the high value end might be right now to get the win if you can manage it and take a round. And then see how bad next round is with the ridiculous number of spies that are probably going to get pulled out of his deck and played. And don't be shocked to see some weather cards go down either. So uh, first things first, I think we are going to play some of these guys. Don't forget, Nilf Guardian Empire has like 10 point archers as well. So, just because, you know, you can see I've got a couple hero cards down here. Um, without weather cards to deal with his 10 point archers, um, holding on to those for like a third round sweep is not a guaranteed win. We're waiting for those medic archers. There's one. All right. So with our medic, our our question is: Do we get do we dig into our deck and uh, pull out that seven point? You know what? Let's see what he puts down here. This is just an ugly, ugly situation for us. So you, I get, I'm, I'm telling you, there's a scorch card in his hand. Um, he just, you got to be real careful about what you play in these situations, because technically, 
<laughs> these guys together would make them the highest point value cards on the board. And if you play these guys together, that makes these the highest point value cards on the board. So you could probably get away with playing one of these down here. But two of them will likely get scorched off. Okay, now that his archer is the highest point value card on the board, now you could get away with playing these and seeing what he does. Of course. Up, guys, I don't know. Here comes a spy. Now that was interesting. Um, so that was a... We're going to use this to pull out our one of those four point value ones. I didn't want to pull that seven out because this is going to be such a tight game. Christ. That really didn't help us. Uh, it did give us some lower level cards to play here. If he scorches, he might scorch them. No, he can't. Here comes another spy. Does he understand what I was talking about before? <laughs> yeah, he's just got like... This is a crazy deck to play against. This could be bad in all sorts of ways if he's sitting on a weather, another weather card. Um... You just don't know that if you can... Uh, that Scorch card will end our game in the next round if we if we go to the next round. Like, if we pass this round and hope that these three together will get it for us. Yeah, I think we're about to have a very bad day. If that's what he's sitting on. Because you're going to get 45 points out of these guys collectively. But it's just, it's not enough to deal with all of these freaking spy cards that he has. So there's that. Now you just got to pray he doesn't have a Scorch. He's going to pull that dirt in a minute. Whew. Okay, so that was an ugly match. Um, I've played through that a few times, and uh, that just is... That is ugly. That is a really ugly deck to play against because he literally has so many spy cards that his card draw goes up, and uh, he winds up just carding you to death with high point value cards and him invalidating... Uh, your a pen, a potential to do clear weather. Uh, you may want to pull out uh, a clear weather or two cards into your deck uh, for this match. Uh, I'm just not sure what other recommendations I can make. It's really about, for this one, if you're playing Northern Realms deck, it's, uh, it's a luck of the draw type situation with him. Sorry, and you can see that he, he fucking draws a lot. So, uh, that's like it. Losing, but that don't mean I don't... You've been playing a while. In Novigrad? There's Oliver the Innkeep. Uh, and you can see that we got Yennefer of Venerberg as our reward card. We'll go check her out real quick, and then we will wrap up and move on to the next one. 
So she is actually a hero card that's a medic, and she's neutral. So she can be in any of your decks, which is nice. So we will be back with our next part of playing Inkeeps. We're going to head out to the Inkeep at the Crossroads. Be back in just a sec. All right, so now we're out at the Crossroads with the next part of our playing Inkeeps quest. Uh, this does take us back down into Velen, and I know if you're coming from... Um, tracking down all the cards out in Novigrad. I've got this listed under the uh, kind of the Novigrad section. And that's honestly because two of the quests cross up into Novigrad, and uh, until you get up in that area, you really don't get it rocking uh, out until you get out in Oxenford. So uh, technically, it's a crossover, and I it, uh, but it does include Velen. It just didn't get uh, linked in any of the other uh, Velen videos. So that's it for the beginning of the quest. Just make it out here to the crossroads, back in Velen, and you'll find your innkeep inside the bar. Go ahead and chat him up, and we'll get started with the game in just a moment. All right, so we are into our game with the innkeeper in the crossroads. We'll go up and check out his leader ability. Look at three random cards from your opponent's hand. Bleh. Um... See how he plays against a spy. He is Nilfgaardian Empire, but uh, we're going to pray that this Nilfgaardian Empire deck is not the same as the last one we played against, because Jesus, that was rough. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and grab that spy out. Now, we don't have a Matic floating around, so if this becomes another one of those freaking spy games, this is. Uh, we're going to be on the losing end. Oh, okay, so we do have a medic now. Here's the Anifer. Uh, we're going to assume that he really is rocking some additional spies in his deck and pull this guy off versus uh, starting to play point cards and using her to pull him out at a later round. question is, do we want to win now or win later? Um, this will give us the win. I'm trying to think about Scorch again, and uh, if Scorch comes around, how that's going to play out. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's drop this guy for the win. play this. I'm wondering if we play this spy card or not. And the reason I say that is because he's got, if he has some of those freaking archers like we saw last time, uh, that could be ugly. Let's play this guy for the win and then plan on pulling him out of our deck with our medic. Yeah, let's do that. That way hopefully he only has one spy in his discard that he can pull out and play on us. Ew, God, we pulled our third decoy. That's awesome. Okay, we're good. We're really good. So we're gonna th no 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 no. We're gonna slap down. Burton Roach. So I'm a little more confident in this hand than uh, in the last one, specifically because we have clear weather and we have two commanders' horns. So we are going to um, throw these guys down. It really doesn't matter. I mean, it's not like he's going to decoy off any other cards. So I'm just wondering if he's going to decoy off the... Uh, if he has another decoy, if he's going to decoy off that spy when we drop it. Oh, there's a 10-point medic. Yeah, here comes that 7-point spy. Okay, here's our spy on his board. That got us absolutely jack shit. Look at three random cards in the opponent's hand. Okay, um, do we decoy that and spy off, or do we use it for points? Let's leave it on the board for points. Uh, we'll go ahead and use her now. Yeah, throw that on the board.
So that was the mistake. I didn't think he was going to scorch that off. Uh, you should have saved. I should have saved the medic for that potential uh, occurrence instead of using it to pull the siege engine. Now, uh, we may still be okay. Uh, honestly, I think with two commander's horns, if he's not rocking an actual scorch card that will rip some of these bigger plays off the board, I think we'll be all right. Yes, the ten point archers. How many can he possibly have? Depends on what he's got left in his deck. Fog hurts you a hell of a lot more than it hurts him. What else is he rocking? Uh, so we're actually going to decoy off one of these cards here just because we want to wait to play our clear weather. He passed. No big deal. We got this in the bag. All right. So we were kind of waiting to see if he had like a torrential rain or something to drop, or like biting. Maybe he wouldn't have biting frost, but uh, like a torrential rain to see if that would affect us, because we have a few more points than he does in that regard. Um, but he didn't. He passed. So we win. That was not <laughs> nearly as crazy as the last round with the Nilfgaardian Empire from the other innkeeper. So I that's it. Admit, I scoffed and lost. Uh, you get Menno. We'll go into our deck, check him out. Here is our new 10 point medic. He's specific to the Nilf Guardian Empire deck, but uh, that's uh, not a bad card to pick up. So we will be back with our next innkeeper, Oliver, in just a moment. All right, now we are out in the city of Novigrad proper and doing our final piece of playing in keeps. This time we need to play against Olivier, or how I like to say, Oliver. And uh, we are going to uh, chat him up and get a game started in just a sec. So we'll be back with that in just a moment. All right, so we are back and we are doing our game against Oliver out in... Novigrad City proper. He is rocking a monster deck, so two couple recommendations on this. If you're playing the Nilfgaard, uh, the Nilf or sorry, if you're playing the Northern Realms deck yourself, uh, one, your decoys are only going to be useful in this deck if you're rocking a medic, you draw the medic, and you plan to play the uh, you know medic. De, uh, you know, pull from your discard, decoy the medic out, and then do it again. Uh, outside of that, I wouldn't stack your deck too deep with decoys for this because he does not have spies, So, and I haven't seen him run decoys myself, so it's not like he's decoying off your spies and slapping them back on the board. You know what I mean? So um, going decoy heavy on this uh, may not be the best option. Also, since he is a monster deck, uh, a Biting Frost card, or two may not be the worst thing in the world to run. Just FYI on that. So, uh, without further ado, let's uh, jump into this. We'll spy him up and pray for a good card draw. Uh, not really what we're hoping for, but we'll take it. 
So he plays very aggressively early on. You didn't just see it there, which is strange. I'm waiting for a muster card to come out, which is going to suck cards out of his deck in his hand. And that's still not happening. He's going to make us waste cards. But it's okay because we can suck cards out with our medics for the next round. Do we see if he has a Scorch Rocking? We'll go with this guy here and see what happens. <clears throat> he just passed. Oh god, <clears throat> that means that uh, if you haven't played against the monster deck before and you don't know what a muster is, it pretty much takes all the cards of the same name and sucks them out of the opponent's either hand or deck or both. So if they're rocking like serious number of monsters and you can go from having no points on the board to having 30 points on the board with one card play. So we're going to use this to uh, seal our round and then we're going to medic those cards out of our discard pile. Uh, the next for the next round so we'll call that a win you can see playing the monster faction they randomly select a, a card from the previous round to stay on the board okay for us we are going to we're gonna medic out one of our blue stripes commandos <clears throat> Sorry, we're not going to do them both at the same time just because of uh, potential scorch. Here comes the monster. So, this is where it can get kind of. Uh, I think ugly is the word. We don't massively outcard him. So, this could go horribly wrong depending on what he has in his hand. That's nothing too disconcerting. Slap him down. Fiend. Nothing to be worried about. <clears throat> See, it, it, this is what I was talking about when I came when it came to using a biting frost. That it might be useful depending on what you're running yourself. Like if you're stacked heavy through here uh, with siege cards, it might be useful. So with three cards left, we're going to hope that one of them is not some ridiculous muster that uh, just sucks in a ton of melee cards to really buff that commander's horn that he just dropped. Yeah, and we don't care about any of these weather effects because, frankly, we're going to remove them with our uh, our leader card. We're just hoping we don't see a scorch. That's that's what we're hoping for. Ice giant. So we're going to drop this guy down here. Yeah, and without doing anything, we're one point ahead, so it really doesn't matter. We're we don't even have to use our leader card's uh, clear weather ability. We can just uh, pass here and win. So, not the worst monster deck uh, you will play against in the game. Uh, there are some uh, definitely more that you will like a lot less. <laughs> you win. Go. Okay, so for playing against him and winning, you get an Elf Guardian Empire card. We'll go out to our deck and check that out. And it is this guy right here. So hero range, 10 points. Not too bad. No special ability, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers. That finishes up our uh, Gwent players playing Innkeeper's Quest. In and if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section. Lands. And also check the video description. There should be some links to some additional Gwent-related videos down there. So, as always, thanks for watching. Take care.